Welcome back to Bay Hill Studio. I have a different kind of project for you today that I hope will be um, interesting and be useful to you. So my dad handed me a bunch of ties, neckties, and he asked me to shorten them. He um, bought the wrong size, they're too long, and he needs them shortened a little bit. So I've already shortened these two, and I thought that I would show you how um, easy it is to do. And um, so I'm just going to dive right in. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is um, we're going to take a look at the necktie and you've got the wider front portion and we're going to go to the back, which is the skinny portion of the tie. And somewhere in between the two, you're going to find a seam. And I can find it right here. So let me show you. Now this one is right by a stripe, so it's actually really hard to see and there's a part of the seam here and a part of the seam right here on this side those are all the same seam so i'm going to unpick that seam but to do that first we're going to unpick a couple inches um, and i've already started past this part of the seam past each part of that seam so i've already started down below and here's where that seam is. So I'm unpicking about, about three or four inches just to make it easier um, to work with. And we're just gonna open up that tie. So here's the top part of the seam. We're just gonna keep unpicking. A little bit more okay now when I open it up you're gonna see this um, kind of like interfacing in here now this one is interesting it's um, has two pieces right here they typically um, more ties I, I see more ties with just one long piece so this isn't as common but this is great because I can easily um, cut this and shorten it so whether it has a seam right here or not we're just going to kind of cut that to open it up and we're going to have to shorten that anyways so that's not a problem all right so once we have it opened up we are going to find that seam. So here you can see it. And what I do want to take note of is how wide the fold is. So this fold is a half inch. This one is bigger. So I'm just going to work with this one, the side that has a half inch fold, because that's going to be easy to work with. All right. So um, I forgot to mention also, my dad wants his ties to be 60 inches long, and each of the ties is a different length, so I have to measure the tie ahead of time. This one is only 62 inches long, so I only have to take off two inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully unpick this seam here. Just get started, and it is really easy to come apart once you get it started. You can use a seam ripper. I just have these little scissors right by me, so that's what I'm using. And this is the part that might be really scary to you um, because it feels so, well, all of it might be, because <laughs> every step feels so final, but it's really, um, more forgiving of a project than you think. I'm just picking off the stray little threads. The other side. Okay. All right. So now I have um, the, this is the side with the wide end and I'm going to work with the side with the long skinny end that's going to be in the back because that is just way more forgiving to work with that side. So I need to take off two inches and part of that two inches is the fold. So that is included in it. So I'm going to keep it folded 
just because it adds stability, it's easier. I'll show you if I unfold it, it can um, kind of curve sometimes. This is, these are silk ties and so they don't have, you know, like a, a good structure to them. So I am just going to measure here one and a half inches. Make sure I get the whole thing. And once I measure one and a half inches, I'm going to cut across here. Now remember that that is including the fold. So really I'm taking off two inches. All right, so I've got my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna double check, always double and triple check. So I wanna take off two inches. I've got my half inch fold and my one and a half inch in addition to that. And I cut. So there's my two inch strip removed. Okay, that's gonna feel a little bit scary, <laughs> but it's okay. So now all we have to do is sew these two pieces back together. So I'm going to line this up and here you're gonna open out. This is where I, sometimes you wanna uh, unpick just a little bit more so that you can open it up bit more all right and this remember we're going to keep this out of the way this interfacing I'm going to open everything up and it is very floppy <clears throat> so just know that and what I try to do is let me show you there is a, um, a, a fold on this side that's really wide. And then there's this little fold that goes over twice. And so I'm just trying to line those up as best I can um, when I am matching these together because it does make it easier. But this is not easy to do, I'm gonna say right here. Um, you want your point usually to extend a little bit past and I'm going to be doing a half inch um, seam allowance. So because that's the half inch seam allowance that I took off earlier. The only thing is this is really weird because they did this really, lo really large um, seam allowance on that side and that is not normal. So I'm just going to be totally transparent here. This is weird. Hmm. So if I put this here, I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold that over as if I have my seam allowance. This is such a weird, I picked a weird tie, you guys. And so I will do another one that will hopefully be more normal <laughs> than this. And I'm going to line up. Hopefully that lines up. The, um, the fold on that side and let's see if that works for this side because this is really strange. All right, we're gonna give it a shot. I can always unpick it um, if it doesn't work out. Okay, now that I have that lined up, I've actually gotta take that pin out, put it right here. Okay. All right, we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that works. So this side is over and this side is not. And that's just because of the weird, oh, how big of a seam allowance did they do there? Or fold, they did a one inch fold on one side and a half inch fold on the other side. So that's really strange. Um, I actually think I'm gonna take it back. We've gotta stick with that one inch fold 
on our half inch on this side. So that's going to be a little bit tricky, but we have to do that because that's what they used. And so the measurements actually, it'll, it'll, um, the tie will be too long if I do it the other way. So, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a iron and just a medium or cool iron and press a half inch seam so that I can figure out where exactly to line these up and I will be right back. Some of you were probably screaming through the screen at me to do this from the beginning and I was just a little slow <laughs> to do that. So actually, um, instead of lining up from the edges, which is what I want to do, I'm going to line up on a half inch seam, which I folded, a half inch fold, and the one inch fold that's already there. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to just take a minute and get these in place. that fit perfectly on the fold. Those lined up perfectly. So a little bit of a weird situation there. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stitch along the fold. So normally, if you sew a lot, you know you're gonna stitch um, from, you're gonna measure from distance to there, and that's where you stitch. I'm ignoring any distance because there are two different distances here, two different raw edges and I'm just stitching on the fold. Okay, so here we go. And again, you're gonna make sure all the sides are opened up and that your interfacing is out of the way. And I am just going to line up so that my needle is right on the fold there and slowly stitch along that fold. Now it might not be perfectly aligned with the other side, but it's as close as I'm going to get it because this fabric is just so slippery and that's okay. Okay. So right there is our seam and here's what our inside looks like. So now we are going to um, just press open our fold, which is already kind of pressed. I'm gonna give it another little press and then we're gonna take care of closing this up. All right, so it's time to handle this interfacing issue now. Now, remember I have this one part that is kind of sewn, they had pieces sewn together. I'm just gonna clip that because it's already, I don't need it. Um, I already need to cut off interfacing and I can see that that's already overlapping. Now I still need to cut off some more because I want these two to meet. And so what I'm doing is overlapping them and then I'm going to carefully lift it away so I can see where they meet and that's where I'm going to cut right there and I just cut off that overlap. So now they should meet up and I'm going to take that to my, my machine and I'm just going to stitch back and forth. Okay, so I stitched just zigzag back and forth and it is um, all in place. Now I'm going to get my pins and we are going to start putting this back together. So my seams are open where I um, made that one seam. And that little bit is a little long, so I'm gonna trim that. And then we're just going to kind of put it back together. So I'm gonna give this side just a quick little press. Sorry, I'm off camera. There we go. Just so it's a little crisp. And then I'm gonna do this other side. So I'm just going to fold and sometimes like I tried to say before is this fold and this fold you want to try to get them to match up but I haven't ever gotten them to perfectly match up so we're just going to ease them together 
and overlap this raw edge without pulling too tight. And then I am going to just pin in place while I keep going. Okay, and I'm gonna find one more pin. Okay, so then our other side looks like that. And then all we're going to do is hand sew this closed. So, get my needle and thread. The way that I hand sew it, and you may have your own sewing stitch that you like to use, so feel free to use it. But I'm gonna start by tying off a little knot on the bottom part. Just get that. Okay, and then what I like to do snip off that thread. What I like to do is now grab about an eighth to a quarter inch from the top part, just right in the fold, and then right where um, that thread comes out, I'm going to go down to the bottom part and also grab an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And then I just continue. So now I go, my thread came out here. And so now I'm going to go straight up to the top fold and grab a little piece. And what it does is it just creates a nice visible stitch right there. So I'm just going to keep going now um, and close up this whole thing. And I will speed this up so that I won't bore you with this. Okay, so you can see that I'm at the end now. And so all I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I've got a couple more stitches. So it's always good to double check, just like I just did. And let's finish up these last couple stitches. And then I'm going to go just a couple stitches past because I know those threads that I cut initially are gonna be loose. So I wanna really secure this area. We're good. So now I'm going to just make a couple little stitches on the bottom part um, and a couple little knots. So there's one knot and I'll probably just do two or three. There's two. You don't want to do too many because you don't want to create a little bump there. Um, so there's three knots and now I'm going to poke my thread in and I'm going to let it come out in this gray area so it'll be hidden and then I'm going to pull it just a little bit because then when it loosens up that thread will go back into the tie. So I'm pulling it and then I'm going to snip and that thread is now inside the tie. So that looks kind of messy but that's what it is right there and I'm just going to give it a little press. So Oh, 
there. Now I've given it a little press, which neatens it up a little bit, but that's not going to be seen. So really don't worry about it. This is what it looks like on the outside. This part is going to be completely invisible. And there you have it, your finished tie. So I have one tie left to do, and I'm going to quickly work through that with you guys just so we can see. Maybe it'll be a more normal tie um, as we open it up, and maybe not. We might find something interesting. Interesting. So we'll do one more. All right, so this tie is also 32 or 62 inches, and so I only need to take two inches off. So again, I'm going to find that seam, which is right here and right here. So we're going to just start unpicking. There's the bottom part, and I'm just going to carefully break some threads and open this up. This actually, I like this fabric better. It's um, a weave, so I think it'll be easier to work with. It won't probably won't slide as much. We'll see. We have this really loosely sewn, which tells me, you know what? I could be sewing, stitching looser stitches when I stitch it back up. I tend to do things really tight because I don't want it to come undone. But look how loosely this is done. I, I can just unpick it so fast. I'm not even snipping it. I'm just sliding these out. All right, so I'll go up a little bit further. And there is our seam. So I'm going to snip, and this one, you see, doesn't have that seam like the last one did. I'm just going to snip it, just like that. Open that up for us, and then we are going to, first, I want to see how big that those folds are. So we've got three-fourths of an inch. These are three fourths of an inch, both of them exactly. And so that's good to know when we put it back together. We're just going to snip it apart. I know some of you are going to be so upset I'm not using my seam ripper for this, but sometimes I just use what's on hand. And my little scissors are right there, so that's what I'm using. Now I'm just pulling at some of these little threads. Let's get them out of the way. Although we are going to be cutting some of these off. Now um, for this one, again, I'm going to set aside the part that's the front of the tie, and I'm going to work with the back of the tie. This one I am going to open up because it has more structure to it, and with a 3 4 inch fold, it's just a little, oh, it's still bending, you guys, just like I thought. But it's just a le little easier to find the markings on the ruler if I do inches and half inches. I don't want to work with 3 4 inch because it's feel like it's less exact. So let me get my little scissors and I'm just going to kind of push that. All right, so now I'm just going to gently adjust this so that we're lining up with our two inch line because I want to take two inches off. Just gotta be really careful. Okay, I think, oh, let's get up here. Well, that part doesn't wanna move. Okay, that's good enough. So now I'm going to double check two inches and cut. So what I'm going to do is um, we know that we are I'm doing three fourths inch seam allowance because it's the same on both sides. So, I'm just going to line this up. And this has, if you don't have a three fourths inch marking on your sewing machine or whatever mark it is, 
you can just use the fold from the piece that's, uh, that you didn't cut. So I'm just gonna kind of play with this until we get them lined up. Let's see how this looks. I mean, this does have a weave to it, but it's still, I thought it would have more structure, but it's still really slippery. So we just do our best. Okay, that looks good. Do one more pin. And then I'm just gonna double check that going to look on the other side. Ooh, that's going to line up really nicely. That might be my best one yet. Okay, so I'm just going to follow the fold and stitch. Okay, so I'm going to press this open and um, then we will hand stitch everything closed. All right, so I did press it open, but I forgot about our interfacing. So let's take care of that. I'm just gonna lay it out. And we are going to overlap it and cut. And this is a messy line. So I'm actually just going to cut a new line right there. Take off that extra off the underneath extra and they match up and then we are just going to carefully match those up and stitch them So that is stitched up. Now I'm going to fold this over just how it was before. And then again, I've got a little triangle now poking out that we're going to trim. And I'm going to fold this over. It's still, there we go. And just carefully kind of make it look exactly how it did before. It's never gonna be exact, but we do our best. Trim off extra strings, get them out of the way. Okay, and then we'll hand stitch that closed. This time around, I am going to try to do bigger stitches like the original stitching in this tie. And I might not be able to help myself from doing smaller stitches, but I'm going to try to make them looser because it does have a more puckered look when you do them tight. So let's see how this works. <laughs> That's stressful. Okay. already got a knot in this. Okay. All right, so I kind of pick up the fold and then instead of going right where my stitching was, I'm going about a half inch away. And I'm trying a different thread this time and it's already knotting, so I don't really like it. And you can use thread wax. Um, you can wax your thread actually before you start sewing and that helps it not to knot, but I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna have to try to avoid the knotting. Okay, that's working. 
the, the longer stitch length is working just fine. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep up with it. Okay, so I think what I like the best is doing longer stitch lengths, but still kind of keeping, um, not having a space in between the two. So I'm still going right below, but instead of a fourth to an eighth, eighth of an inch, I'm going half inch or so. And keeping it loose. I'm not pulling it tight. Just keeping my stitches pretty loose as I go. I'm just going to tie a couple of little small knots. I'm just going to do two here. I'm going to bring this through. This is burying the thread when you do this. Snip it, and then it's gone. It's disappeared. So. There is the part that we stitched, and that's it on the other side. So we just took two inches off, and there is our finished tie. So it's a really easy project to do, and one that you might not think you'll ever need. I never thought I would have to figure out how to do this, but it is easy and um, looks great. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I hope that you'll take a moment to like and subscribe. And most of all, I wish you a very blessed day.